Be careful. Is this your place or his? Oh, his. I would never have that Ikea couch. Who's that? Hello. Oh, Frank. This poor man. Who are you? Detective Davis. So, Frank, you remain from missing and you don't even notice. Missing? Define missing. I mean, I'm sure he's somewhere, so therefore, can he really be missing? You don't seem too terribly concerned. Hi. I don't believe we've met. I'm Kendra. Oh, uh, welcome to, to our home. Have you lived here alone, Ella? Leave her alone. Were you born here? Do you like ducks? She's having kind of a tough time with the move. All she's ever known is New York City. She's convinced she won't find any friends out here, so. You think you know a dog? I have a friend who been the foster home for dogs. Got lots of them that need a good home. Do you have a dog? Me? No. I can't stand them. I'm a pure big cat woman. <laughs> hey, boss. Nellie. Sorry for the wait, everyone. I'm going to sit about it with Ryan Reynolds. Which one's better? White Castle or In and Out? <laughs> White and Castle. Out. See? Tough choice. What do you think, Snitch? <laughs> you. Have an early morning. 9 a.m. Are you an early riser? <laughs> Generally. Oh, perfect. Why is that? Why is that? <laughs> this is for my miracle. Did you know I swam the channel? Um, no. Once I get my miracle from Miss Kitty, I'm gonna swim it again. Who's Miss Kitty? The miracle maker. What kind of miracle maker? The real kind. She can do anything. If you think I'm drunk, but I'm intoxicated. But I've been drinking all day. Yes, I do. I have cerebral palsy, you asshole. Welcome to Meet the Biz. Today I'm very excited. I'm very excited because a, uh, a, a dear friend of mine, uh, I mean, uh, this woman has so much depth. She's a stunning actress who, who comes from those real places, whether it's comedy or drama. You know, I was thinking about what word, what word comes to mind and it's powerhouse. I mean, she is a powerhouse. She's an actor a filmmaker, a solo artist, a speaker, um, a, an a artist educator, a disability inclusion artivist. Artivist, yes, artivist, yeah. Uh, and that voice is Miss Diana Elizabeth Jordan. Ben, hello my friend, how are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm offended that if I never see you, I see you like all the time. David, how long has it been since we talked this morning at the staff meeting? At morning meeting. <laughs> at morning meeting. It's been at least three, three hours. How have you been in the past three hours? Well, <laughs> busy. <laughs> and having fun at it, you know, yeah. at least, you know, I, I am keeping busy and, and focusing and creating and, and all this stuff as well as you are. Yes, I am. It's you know, really been interesting. I, I think, you know, even though there's been definite challenges in this new, our new normal, it, it's become a normal. It, it's, it literally has become a new normal, but I, I realized that I also had a lot of wonderful opportunities to be really creative and 
challenge myself creatively, uh, especially in the, I'm making recording classes for performing at Studio West. I you know something if you had that one kind of year ago, I would have been like, what? What? <laughs> yeah. And you know what one of my favorite things is to start my week off? What? Morning cup of joy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I mean, so much. I mean, it's just so healing, you know? You. How long have you been doing morning cup of joy? I've been doing them on and off for about a year year and a half. I, I had some um, technical issues this past month, so hopefully I'll be back up on, on Monday. But I started them about a year and a half ago, and I would do them on and off. And then during COVID, I just felt, why don't I really do them on a more frequent basis? So I am um, I started about a week <laughs> into COVID. I mean, I think I did my first, oh, what I call the new, the new relaunch um, in the March, early April. And I decided to take them seasonally. So I did like my spring season, take yeah. a little break. I'm now into my summer season. Um, so <laughs> that make a <laughs> part of me, it's, <laughs> Technologic uh, allows me to I will have one on Monday, um, but it's been really great. I'll do a summer season, probably take a little break, and then do a fall and a winter season. Well, what's so nice too? It's it is on Mondays, so it's sort right. of like oh, it's Monday. It's morning cup of joy, and it's it's and they could find that on your YouTube channel. Yes. Yeah, they 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 it on my YouTube channel starting. August 1st, they'll be all up on my Vimeo channel, RBTV. Um, all my, all my, all my channels are RB, RBCTV. Um, and I'll also give you the the links will be um, in the page. But yes, I'm going to post them up on my YouTube channel. And that's been the thing about learning how to create content. It's like I've created them, they're all on my Facebook page, they're all on the Rainbow Butterfly essay page on Facebook right now. And that's um, what those initials were, the RBC. Yeah, the Rainbow Butterfly essay is RBC, Rainbow Butterfly Cafe, mm -hmm. which is the name of my education, but that edutainment. Which that is another, you know, morning cup of joy and then the Rainbow Butterfly Cafe, it's all so, you know, you hear it, and you just want to like come in and enjoy. Well, and that, that was the motivation to create both is that I wanted, you know, I see the Rainbow Butterfly Cafe, which is more, not a physical space, but a, a space where um, I'm conducting a workshop or but a space where everyone's welcome and rainbow stands for diversity, butterfly <laughs> is transformation because butterflies transform from the, you know, they go into the cocoon and when the worm goes into the cocoon, it comes out a butterfly. But um, rainbow is for diversity, butterfly is for transformation. And cafe is a place where the community gathers. So that's the meaning behind the Rainbow Butterfly Cafe. It's uh, it's it's really gorgeous. I mean, you were talking about it. it reminded me when I used to live in the guest house at Angela Rockwoods, mm -hmm. and I would walk out in the morning. And one of my favorite things, they had she had monarch butterflies all around. Wow. So in the morning there was like I'd say at least ten, and they were flying around and. They were just like, I had names for each of them. No, <laughs> but, <laughs> it, but it was interesting. And then yesterday I, I had dropped something off in, in, in North Hollywood, very social distancing, and there was a butterfly and it, it was just right by me and it was just mm -hmm. so calming. So it's such a great title that you have created for your business. Well, well thank you. It, 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 it's taken a while, you know, to, and it's still, you know, a, a daily challenge, but it's worth it. You know, I, I think 
sometimes you need to just start things yourself and not wait till you're ready and wait till all the stars are calling for the line. I think sometimes you have to do it and in the doing, the stars start to align or the steps start to align. But I always say, you never know until you try. And I think so many times we give us our messages how it's not going to work or what if I don't do this, what if I don't do that. But what I always say, what if you, what if you, what if in the positive? What if I make a lot of really great connections? What if it becomes another source of income for me? What if I could create a really successful, sustainable business? What if that, and that if, well, what if it doesn't work? What if, you know, people won't like it? So the truth is, you still are never gonna know until you try. And I truly believe the only way to guarantee something won't work is to not try. Mm -hmm. right. But the only way you can guarantee something won't work is to not try. Once you try, once you put the effort in, you've increased your opportunity by 50%. Because either it won't work, it will work, or it's them. And usually it's gonna be some version of what you think it will be, what you think it will be and what it really is may not always mesh, you know, but I think, and I found what it becomes is something really beautiful beyond what I could have ever imagined. Yeah. 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 Well, I, and, and uh, especially in the last couple of years since I've known you, you're just like, you're like creating things. I, I mean, when you did your uh, premiere of your one woman show uh, that you're working on, it's Performing Arts Studio West, it was yeah. like, wow. I mean, it's, it was a standing ovation afterwards. I mean, and so you have the new show, but you, I'm talk about doing things. You've had, how many one woman, woman shows have you done? Um, well, this, um, Happy Ever After was really the, uh, one that I kind of wrote, created myself over. It's been a journey. It started off as, um, a few years ago, I went through a story, um, Storytelling workshop, which was really teaching us how to facilitate other people to tell their own stories. Right. So I really believe in the power of storytelling, whether it's a performance or just the process of storytelling. And this is more about helping people tell their stories than performing their stories. So I did that in New Mexico with the fabulous Tanya Taylor Rubenstein. So I did this 10 minute version of it, which was very more of a crystal, you know, the telling that story of being single and looking for love and that was that story. And then over the years, um, it just expanded and I kind of wanted that combination of a bit of a performance, but it's the autobiographical um, performance as well. And I think as a woman, as little girls, we're kind of fed this story that we're going to meet our Prince Charming and grow up and live happily ever after. And I think, and a lot of women do that, and, and that's really wonderful. But I think we're at the top that if we don't find that, we're not okay. That if we don't find that Mr. Right or Miss Right as a woman, if we don't find our partner, um, somehow there's something wrong with us. And I, I totally brought into that. And what I realized as I, as I was developing this show is what I really found when looking for love was when I found my one true love, which I didn't want to spoil the end. <laughs> so, right, right. And, then, and this really is how I, found, how I found a true love. Well, and, and what's so wonderful about it is, uh, it is, when I was watching it, I identified with it. Mm -hmm. the, whoever sees it, men, women, uh, it's about that relationship that you're like longing for. And mm -hmm. it's just, it, 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 it's really wonderful. I can't wait, I can't wait to see you do it again. 
outside of all this stuff uh, that's going on. Up, up in my, yeah, up in, you know, it was really interesting. If something was starting to happen right before COVID. Well, I think, again, you, I always try and, I always try and look at the glass, not half full, but overflowing. I say this a lot, if, it, if your glass has empty, half full, of they actually mine is overflowing. <laughs> Yeah, it really is, and that doesn't mean, I think that the thing where, like, people say that, oh, they only use the positive, it's like, I'm positive because I have a lot of things to be grateful for, but that doesn't mean there's not the shadows and the opposites. That doesn't mean I, I don't have difficult times, I do, and, and this that past few months have been very challenging emotionally on many, many different levels of COVID, which well, what's going on in our society with Black Lives Matter and all those things and realizing I navigate the world as an African-American woman who has a disability and that, that acceptance and marginalization, I feel that's all been a really challenging time. But throughout the challenges and throughout how hard it's been, I still have a lot to be grateful for. I'm grateful for you. I have friends that love me and a family. I have my nephews. I, I have so much to be grateful for. So there's always the balance. And I think, again, you can focus on what you don't have or what you do have. Well, and it's, and it's so interesting how we are learning how to connect in different ways right now. And when we get out of this again and go to where we're going next, we'll so appreciate that touch. Exactly. I mean, and again, you know, I don't want to create the illusion that I'm like, you know, float around with an umbrella like Mary Poppins all day long, you know. I am, I, 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 la 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 and sing, you know, la la la. I, I thought I saw you the other night. Yeah, like. you did. That, that was me. But I do recognize that I am a very blessed person. Yeah. And I have a lot to be grateful for. And sometimes focusing on that gratitude, because I am a person that, in addition to living with cerebral palsy, because I also um, was diagnosed with depression and anxiety in 2004, um, focusing on the positive things is a daily therapeutic way for me to cope, cope with um, some of the more emotionally challenging things that I deal with. Um, Right. And then also educating, you know, educating people about disability, about psychiatric disabilities, physical disabilities. So it's a balance. It's always a balance. And some days are better than others, like everybody else. I have my good days and my bad days. Right. But even on my worst days, I still know I'm very lucky. Because on my worst days, I reach out to my friend Kimberly or I reach out to you. And there are days when I'll just say, I need to be reminded that I met. There are days I need to be reminded of that because I am going through a hard time, but I always know I have someone to reach out. And that's so important that, that you're, you're saying that and that you're also putting the energy into a creative endeavors like the morning cup of coffee, the, the mm -hmm. rainbow butterfly, Cafe. I mean, and you have done so much amazing work. I mean, you you were in a documentary that was nominated for a stu student Oscar, right? Yeah, that was, that was Anthony Week. That was oh my god, that was so good. Imaginary that, circumstances. It was yeah, gorgeous. That, that, that was that was that was fantastic. That was really funny because I remember when Anthony counted to me, and I was I'm like, sure who he was, and he goes, yeah, come meet me at my hotel, and we'll go out for breakfast, and I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> well, turned out to be a great experience. Anthony is just a beautiful, wonderful guy. I, you remind me, I probably need to reach out and see how he is. But that, again, 
That's what I mean about you never know when you open what gifts may come that you never expected. And, and imagine the circumstances which is one of those unexpected gifts. And I think if you open your heart, things can not always manifest the way you want them to, but there are things that will manifest that you didn't imagine and which will be amazing. Mm -hmm. And there's always going to be the balance. You know, I've had the disappointments and the the you know I've had the, the low lows, but again, again, like I say, is still um, and we're home. <laughs> but um, you know, you can have the lowest of lows, and you know, I don't want to give any illusion that everything is always easy for well, me. That's but, that's what makes life too is the, yeah, the, the roller like, coasters. Well, and I think that's why I love acting because I love I love getting to tell those stories. I love I talk love, about acting. I mean, what, what, you, you ain't ain't woke connections. I love that film. I mean, you've worked with Corey Reader and Carl Hansen, yeah. and then you you direct you direct tomorrow more. <laughs> I can. Yeah, I yeah direct. <laughs> The resting I can was truly an amazing experience. And, and I, I, I've been working with Corey Reader and the East of Sea of Disability, East of Sea of Disability Film Talent, founded by my dear friend, our dear friend, Nitna Vicky. And you introduced Corey and I the second year of the challenge. And Corey and I became really good friends. And I've worked on I think every one of his films since um, the Speed Date, which is his first film, yeah. and then the second year he wrote Bot Stout, and I had the lead in that, and I was honored with a Best Actor Award. We worked yes. together on Best Friend, which won, and then um, we did Ain't Woke, and I started to associate produce. And it was that year when I said, you know, I wonder if I could direct, because I directed the theater, I've never directed film. And so, of course, I thought, if you direct, I'll executive produce. Um, and that was last year. And I loved it. <laughs> uh, you know, people have always said, oh, now you're transitioning to be a director. No, I'm just becoming a director in addition to um, what I do. It's never at either or at the end. You know, well, but so you, you think about it again. Uh, 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 morning Cup of Joy, Rainbow Butterfly Cafe, I Can, very positive stuff. Well, I, I I think you know. I mean, I want to. I want things I do to have a positive impact, a realistic positive impact. And I don't, you know, I don't like my, you know, doing quote unquote the inspirational, you know, disability porn. I don't like that. But I do think it's important because there is so much negativity in the world, and right now. There's, we're getting it from all sides that, you know, things that, things that, in my opinion, should not be political issues are becoming political issues. Mm. Like wearing a mask, you know, that, that shouldn't be a political issue. It seems like things that are very simple are becoming exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, it did seem that very good. I mean, that, I mean, Wearing a seatbelt is not a political issue. I've never had, I mean, we all wear seatbelts, yeah. right? I mean, well, I, I, mean <laughs> I do. Know, it's a law. It, it's a law. You put a seatbelt on. Why do you put a seatbelt on? For your safety, right? And I've never, I've never seen a protest of the, whether or not we should wear seatbelts. So I think because the so much negative things I see out there, I still, even though I acknowledge them and I feel them, and I hurt with them, 
I, I still want to find ways to be positive. I, I still try and find the gratitude, even in that my deepest despair, yeah. I still try and find gratitude. And sometimes the gratitude through my tears. You know, I mean, sometimes I'm grateful and I'm sobbing. You know, when my friend, Dan, the, when my friend DC died yeah. and took his life, I, I remember being at a funeral and weeping, but it was still very grateful that I had him in my life for when I did. It was just hard that he's not yeah. here anymore. What is, you talk about joy. Mm -hmm. What is your biggest? Oh my gosh, it can depend. You know, it definitely, it's a little thing. And sometimes, sometimes joy catches you off guard. I remember my younger nephew, Jordan, you know, because I'm an auntie, I'm a godmother, I'm very blessed. Um, I remember my, my younger nephew, Jordan, made like a 10, Paid PowerPoint presentation of why he needs a hamster. And ah. he, it was great. I mean, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, he, my older nephew, wrote a song, which he put on a video. So things like that, seeing my, my nephew do stuff, my, my goddaughter is learning to walk now. So that, those things bring me joy. Um, my, my very best friend, one of my very best friends, Blair who I call my older brother, we went to college together. Hmm. She wrote me a few months ago and go, guess what, your aunt. So now I have the little niece, so it's the ch because I didn't have children of my own. Yeah. Having these children in my life that hopefully I'll get to see grow up and I am watching growing up and being a part of their village gives me joy. Um, Sometimes watching Doctor Who can bring me joy. <laughs> you know, I just think it really just depends. I think I think I try to find joy in that everyday thing. Sometimes what? being with my clients, the 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 clients we work with are performing at Studio West. That that brings me joy. So it's, it's they're just little the little moment. That's why I like to call myself morning cups of joy because I think Joy comes in those small little cups, you know, that we we decide, you know, usually like when I was growing up, like the Starbucks or whatever, right. um, which I don't do now because of social distancing. But when you could go out for coffee and when we're meeting, we're usually when you meet up for coffee with, with friends, if you are making a conscious effort to say, hey, let's meet up for coffee. Right. But you think they have a joyful moment, right? Usually people, I mean, sometimes people go for coffee for meetings, but a lot of times they just meet up with your friends and have a cup of coffee. Yeah. And that, 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 that moment is like a cup of joy, right? So that's <laughs> another reason why I have my cafe, my virtual cafe. It's like joy comes in the moments. I don't think it's this everlasting thing that, you know, we do go like, like you said, we go like that, we go woo, 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 woo in terms of emotion. But when we can have those moments where we're going like that, sometimes it makes, even though it's temporary, it's just so nice, you know? Mm. Well, Oh God, that's that's so beautifully said. I'm gonna I'm gonna rewatch that part. If I ever get down, I'm gonna rewatch that what you just said. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that brings me joy, and I know brings you joy, like you mentioned, uh, are um, are the students at Performing Arts Studio West, mm -hmm. and we have a few of them on today. Oh my uh, gosh! They are coming on, and Yay! Uh, so, I'll be able to ask some questions and say hello. I love, I love, I love, I, I, miss, I miss them so much. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hey, guys. Hey.